Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at a build based on using Storm Ashes of War. The DLC introduced two new items. First, this helmet raises strength and dexterity by 4, and increases the attack power of Storm Ashes of War by around 10%, at the cost of your HP flask healing less. This debuff is very noticeable, so if you're taking too much damage, you might want to switch to a different helm. Try using an armor set with high resistances, since we'll be using Storm Color to trade a lot. The other new item is this talisman that also boosts the attack power of Storm Ashes of War by 10%. We can stack this with the Shard of Alexander for an additional 15%. With all this, the increase in attack power is significant, as you can see in this demonstration. These are the weapons we're using, and we'll be switching between them to use Storm Blade, Storm Color, and Storm Assault. Stormblade works well with the Great Katana, since it can deal more damage if the blade, which is very long, also hits the target. Stormcaller works well with Great Axes, because they provide some poise and a lot of base attack power, allowing you to one-shot groups of phantoms if they don't have too much health. We can also use Endure to tank hits before trading. Storm Assault can be very effective in certain situations, since both the initial wind and the final part of the attack can stagger opponents and deal significant damage. Having Endure on a side weapon is crucial since all of these Ashes of War had their poise nerfed in the latest patch. This definitely means that we'll have to be more careful when trading against multiple opponents without Endure, or against big weapons. Alright, let's check out a couple of invasions. Starting things off with a duel, I'm using the Claymore plus Stormblade. Stormblade is really good to punish Estus Flasks, so... Uh, whenever they're very low, they start running and then you can just punish that with the Ash of War. Unlocking from your target can be very useful to catch panic rolling, so that's what I do here. And it gets me the kill. So here I want to showcase why Stormcaller can be very useful when a group of enemies is camping near a ladder uh, or something of this sort. So here I know they're waiting for me, uh, so I buff up. I equip my Great Axe with the Storm Color, and then I just go in. They're all up there, probably poisoned and waiting for me, but uh, I know I can take them, so I just get up the ladder. See that there's three of them. Tries to get me here, but uh, I roll away. Here they almost get me, but I still have my flask. I use Endure with my side weapon, and I finally get the kill on the host. In this case, uh, the summons are waiting for me behind this waterfall. Uh, I tried to do something to lure them out, uh, but I get it by this uh, lightning perfume combo. Thankfully it didn't one-shot me, uh, but it gets me low enough so they start chasing me and lines me up for a perfect storm color kill here. Uh, I end up getting the phantom as well, so that's pretty nice. In this invasion I'm just buffing up to fight the two guys over there, they both have great swords, so they have a lot of um, voice break capabilities. So here I'm learning how that Ash of War that he has works, I uh, haven't seen that before, and I'm also still learning how to uh, use Endure properly and how to bait them, so he here you'll see that I fail a couple of times. Um, but that just showcases how good this combo is. Uh, even though I don't know entirely how to use the combo yet, I still end up winning this invasion, so let's take a look. Here I failed miserably with Endure, I was trying to switch to my weapon, uh, but I still didn't have the quickness yet. Here I do get it correctly and the host just dies on a single combo. That just goes to show how strong this build can be. In this case I was trying out the Great Katana with Stormblade. This can be really, really good, uh, even more so than the Claymore in my opinion. Uh, one, because it's, it has a higher attack rating and two, because the Storm, uh, sorry, the Great Katana is even longer than the Claymore, so there's more chance that you can hit targets with both the Blade and the, and the Ash of War. 
Here I get a pretty difficult invasion because this pair of uh, people are using the backhand blades uh, with the dash Ash of War that leaves an AoE behind. Uh, this I've seen many people already taking a lot of issue with that Ash of War because of how easy it is to just spam it and get people with that. So thankfully here I get a, an invader friend and he helps me to just get one of them off me. Notice that I free aim the Stormblade to hit the host. Uh, the second one I missed and hit the invader actually. Um, but you can use that tech to, to your advantage and to catch people off guard. I switched to the Great Katana because Storm Color can be useful when they're both blitzing you like that. Uh, the invader dies, so I'm fighting 2v1. Thankfully, uh, they're just so aggressive and they just fall for the Storm Color. In this invasion, I get a duo that are using uh, fist weapons and uh, martial arts. So this, these weapons do not have a lot of poise break damage, so I can easily use Storm Color here to trade against them and not be poise broken. I still get a few hits here with the Storm Blade, uh, but they're just blitzing me, so I just try to get some space uh, to heal up. I know they're chasing me, so I switch to Storm Color and it gets me the kill on the host. He was probably trying to mash our one there. That's probably why he still got hit by the rest of the Ash of War. Here I know there's the Phantoms waiting for me at the end of the ladder, so I was hoping to use Storm Color at the end, but I didn't know I had Storm Stomp equipped, so it gets to a really funny trade here where I just mash the Ash of War button and get them repeatedly with that. Still gets me a bit of damage, but here I actually use Storm Stump to get the true combo R1 uh, of the Colossal Sword. That's something you can do if you are using Storm Stump. After realizing that mistake, I actually switched to Storm Color with the Great Katana, uh, buff up while they're healing, and I just try to go in and get the, the kill on them. I try to wait for an opportunity to go in. I see that when he's charging the L1 and I just use the Ash of War whenever I can. Uh, it gets me a lot of damage and then the uh, Great Katana's running attack uh, helps me get the kill on the Phantom. Here then I just try to win the 1v1. Uh, he's very aggressive with the backhand blade so Storm Color proves useful once again. I wanted to show this clip because I think many people don't know how iframes work when the summons enter a world. So you have 10 seconds to, uh, when you enter a world to buff up where people can touch you. And this guy is just trying so hard to hit me and gets killed because of it. In this invasion I'm fighting against a uh, duo. So the host is using the Moonlight Great Sword. And I know that in the latest patch they nerfed the poise damage and the actual damage of the charged attack, the one he did just there. So I wanted to test if that's going to poise break me out of some of these attacks. Uh, as you see there, before the patch that would probably knock me off the air when I jumped. I get a nice storm color. Here, uh, the Phantom seems very aggressive with the Hand of Melania, so that uh, that means I'll probably get him a lot with the Ash of War. Uh, I almost get the kill there, but the fan the host saves him in time. I get hit by a lot, and then I just wait here for an opportunity. The Phantom can't wait to just get on me, so we keep fighting. Because I'm very low on HP, I know he's going to be baited to come in here. And I take that opportunity to get a Storm Color kill. Then it's just the host and me. Uh, so I switch to uh, to the Stormblade weapon, which is better for 1v1s, in my opinion. And here 
I notice he has no HP at all. One single Stormblade without the uh, weapon hit actually almost kills him. He actually got saved by the fact that I didn't have any FP. Uh, try to just stay on top of him to not give him any space to heal up or or just run. And then I get him with both the blade and the Ash of War, which actually one-shots him. And that's pretty much it. As you saw, I'm not the greatest mechanical player, but I still hope some of this information would prove useful to some of you and help you improve in your own invasions. Thanks for staying until the end and see you next time. Oh,